Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into the channel. Today we're going to talk about what is Xtool Creative Space and what are some of the key functions and features that make it stand out from some of the other processing systems. So right now I'm on a blank Xtool Creative Space document, but let's figure out how to get there first. So if you go to Google and type in Xtool Creative Space in the search bar, the first link, XCS Software Download, is what you want. When you click on it, it brings you up to the Xtool homepage where you can click this download button to download the XCS software. It'll bring you down to the download link and you can decide whether you want to download Xtool Creative Space for Windows, Mac, or Android. The cool thing about Xtool Creative Space is that it's going to be able to be used on your phone or tablet, unlike many other engraving softwares. And as you can see, we're on version 2.6.38. So there's been a bunch of different versions over the last few years that they've really fine-tuned Xtool Creative Space to make it the best software possible. So now once we follow the steps to do the download, we get back on the front page. So you can see it's pretty basic. There's a left sidebar with a bunch of different options that you can click on, and we'll go over a few of them in a minute. This top bar that has most of your download and save options plus your settings. And then the right sidebar that has all your engraver settings. One thing I always like to do before I start my engraving is make sure that my Xtool Creative Space software is up to date. And how to do that is come up to the main menu button, click the settings, click about Xtool Creative Space. And you can see I'm on version 2.6.38, which is the latest version. But if you're unsure, click check for updates. And you can see I'm updated. Starting off by looking at this left sidebar, I can click the image button to insert an image via my documents. I can click the text button where I can create a text box and type out my text. Then I can change the size, the font, the text alignment, and everything here on this top bar. I can insert some basic shapes and lines. I can insert a vector, which is just a combination of lines that I can create a shape and then move around as needed. Vector is not something that I use very much, but it's there if you need it. I like to use it sometimes to close the end of an image if that uh, SVG file is not all the way closed where it engraves correctly. So I can just highlight it, then hit the backspace to get rid of it. Next up we have a bunch more shapes. There's a basic shapes option, some borders, that would be great for pictures, plants, animals, festive images, patterns, parts, and then just miscellaneous other images. So I can click one that I like. Next up are some different applications such as a grid array where I can create four different images of the same image. This would be great if you have multiple engravings that you're going to have to create and you don't want to have to go and do each one individually. You can create four of them in one pass. So that would just save you a little bit of time if you're doing engravings in bulk. Next up is a circular array. It's very similar to a grid array. You can change your number of copies and then change your X or Y axis to spread them apart. And it'll just make it in a circle while the other one made it into a grid. That's pretty much the only difference. That would be kind of cool though if you were going to create a coaster or something where you'd like an image around the outside of the coaster. Or anything circular like that. Material Test Array just gives you a bunch of different images of the same image. There's speed on the Y axis and power on the X axis. So if you do this engraving, you can look at the x-axis. So if you're at 100% power and 10 millimeters per second on the speed, it's going to be a very dark engraving. If you're at 10% power and 400 millimeters per second, it's going to be a very light engraving. So you'll want to find somewhere in between where you have the perfect engraver settings for your piece of material and for your engraver. This is something important if you've got some expensive material that you're about to work with if you want to just test one of them and make sure you have the right speed and power necessary before you start engraving. It's also good if you have 
different items that you're going to have to make just to go ahead and figure out what speed and power is necessary to make the perfect engraving from the start rather than trying out 50 different speed and power settings. Then there's code generation which creates QR codes, smart nesting where you can highlight a bunch of different images and then click the smart nest button and it kind of sorts them all together and makes them look a little bit nicer. Measurement pretty much self-explanatory you can just measure between two images or on the inside of an image just to make sure that you have the image the exact size that you need it and lastly the map designer tool is one that I haven't used very much since it's kind of new but you can create maps on Xtool Creative Space but when you create these maps it requires Xtool Creative Space credits and you're given a limited number of credits for free and then you have to either purchase the rest of them or do things for Xtool Creative Space like create videos or something like that to then get more credits. Now to finish off the left sidebar, the next tool which is templates allows you to find a bunch of different templates that are already pre-made that different designers from Xtool Creative Space have used and created that have been nice enough to post on the templates page of Xtool Creative Space. So let's say you're looking for something in particular you can look at one of the pre-made sections or you can just browse through all of the pre-made items that have been posted. As you can see there's a lot of cool different items that other creators have added that you can use. One thing to note though is that a lot of these items do require you to credit the creator and then some of the other files you cannot sell without the creator's permission. As you notice, some of them are free and some of them require credits if you're not trying to create each one of these files. Then there's also an AI tool here on the left sidebar where you can use credits to create AI images to then engrave. One thing I would recommend instead of using this processing software is to go on Google, find an AI image generator, create your image, and then download it back to Xtool Creative Space just like a normal image. I found that to be the easiest and cheapest way. There's also some grab and layer tools here on the bottom of the left sidebar and you can use them to grab your sheet and move it around. This is good if you have your sheet zoomed in. Now quickly looking at the top taskbar you can change your X and Y axis, the width and the height of your image and this aspect ratio locks the width and the height together but if you click that and unlock it then you can change one and leave the other the same. So if I unlock the aspect ratio, I can change the height with the width staying the same. I can change the angle of the image, the positioning and arrangement. I can edit the image, such as remove the background. I can compound images together and then release said compound. So like if I have two images, I want one on top of the other and the bottom image, a little bit of it to be removed. I can use the compound button. So it's just a good way to stack them together and make one complete image. And then the offset button, I can create an offset around the image if I want to cut around it or just create a border around the image to then engrave. Now looking at the right taskbar, here's how you'll update the settings for the processing power of your engraver. So I can score, engrave, or cut an image. So let's pick a different image. So notice here with this image of a music note, when I click engrave, it fills it in, and I can change the power necessary and the speed necessary for that engraving. I can change the number of passes, the uh, number of lines per centimeter. The higher up you go, the more detailed your image will go, and then what your engraving mode will be. So bi-directional will just go side to side with your engraving. Starting at the left then going to the right. But when I score the engraving or cut the engraving you'll notice that the image is no longer filled in that it's just outlined. So scoring just scores around the outside of the image and I can have you know speed and power there and you notice the speed and power settings are different than the engraving. There's a lot less speed for scoring or I can cut where the speed is a lot smaller. 
because speed and power are inverse for cutting. If you have high power, you'll want low speed to be able to cut all the way through the material. Then I can use this materials test guide. If, if I'm not sure what speed and power I need for my material, I can find it on this test guide, click on it, then it'll populate my settings. I can also connect my engraver by hitting this little button right here that looks like two half arrows. And then once I have my engraver turned on, I can click it here and it will connect. Then when I have everything that I need for my image, I can click process and it'll show me a quick preview. It shows the total time that it estimates it'll take to engrave, which is seven minutes. I can frame the image, which pretty much shows the outline of the image on my engraver, on my piece of material, to make sure that the engraving does not go off my piece of material. I can change my origin point and where I want my laser to start. Clicking these buttons will gradually move the head of your laser so that you know you start exactly at the right point. And then you can hit start and you're ready to engrave. One thing I really like about Xtool Creative Space is just the simplicity of it. Everything is right there where you need it and it doesn't have a whole lot of wording and capabilities that are really not needed. If you're a new engraver and you start to look at some processing system like Lightburn, you'll notice that it gets a little bit confusing after you play with it for a few minutes because there's just so much there. Now on the other hand, if you're an advanced engraver, Lightburn may be the way to go because there's a bunch of different things that you can do on Lightburn that you can't do on Xtool Creative Space. And Lightburn is able to be used on many different engraver types, while Xtool Creative Space is just made for Xtool engravers. So if you're a beginner, I would say Xtool Creative Space is perfect for you. And the biggest plus about it is that it's free rather than Lightburn, which has a monthly fee or a yearly fee. The only thing that you have to pay for on Xtool Creative Space is if you have to use some of those credits. But I've never really had a big need for them except when I was doing some AI things right when the AI feature launched. Another really cool thing about Xtool Creative Space is this test materials guide. So if you had the material that's on that guide, it will give you a pretty good guesstimate on what speed and power is necessary for that piece of material. So I really like it. So there's just a quick walkthrough on what Xtool Creative Space is. It's just a processing system that's used on Xtool engravers. And also just try to do a quick walkthrough on the task bars. So if you don't have Xtool Creative Space, again, it's free to download. Just download it, see how you like it, play with it a little bit. If you have an engraver coming through the mail, it'd be good to go ahead and have an idea of what you want to engrave and how to use the processing system before you even get your engraver set up at your house. So I hope you found some benefit from this video. If you don't mind, just please like and subscribe to my channel so I can make some more great content. If you are looking for an in-depth tutorial of Xtool Creative Space, just go on my channel and you can find those there. Also look down in the description where I have some laser engravers that you can purchase with the discount link as well as some test materials that you can use so that when you're able to start your first engravings that they will look perfect the first time that you do it because you've tested and practiced before you started your engraving. So I hope you have a great rest of your day.